200,000 people on 3,800 flights every day. American Airlines knows why you fly. Anyway. Serving Western Manitoba, you're watching CKX Television. News at 6, a new group of soldiers set out overseas. I'm anxious to get over there. And it's all hands on deck for the Brandon Wheat Kings tonight as they take on the Red Deer Rebels. Plus, here on CKX News at 6, we begin our final cast. CKX has been part of my life right from, you know, when we got a TV, so that was our channel. So it's going to be really sad. CKX News at 6. Well, good, uh, good evening and thanks for joining us. It's no way to start off a cast, but we begin tonight with a goodbye. As of 7 o'clock tonight, CKX Television will cease to exist. Blue Point Investment Corporation pulled out of the deal yesterday afternoon. The deal has always been contingent on CRTC approval, but when the CRTC refused to grant mandatory satellite carriage for the station, Blue Point pulled out. Well, the station's been embedded into the fabric of Westman since 1955. We cover stories in Dauphin, Portage La Prairie, Nipua, as far south as Killarney, Boys of Ain, and Coulter. CKX is the only television station to provide quality coverage to those areas and we will miss the stories those communities have to share. CTV announced back in February that it would not be renewing our contract. It looked at one point like Shaw would pick us up. It dropped us soon after. Then Blue Point Investment came in with its talk of grassroots commitments, but as of last night, it is no longer a viable buyer. This will be the last newscast for CKX TV and the last time viewers will pick up any signal at all for this station. CKX's Tanya Kohat has some of the local reaction. It'll be missed. It'll be missed. CKX has been part of my life right from, you know, when we got a TV, so that was our channel. So it's going to be really sad. For sure it's an awful thing that Brandon doesn't even have a television station. Like, we're not much of a city without something. Thursday afternoon, the news came suddenly. We looked as though we were closing. Uh, everything was done, and then Blue Point Investments came out of the blue in August to say they'd buy the station. And since then, we've been working on the application for the CRTC, which was filed this week. Uh, they came back saying they would not give mandatory satellite carriage to CKX Brandon. And at that point, Blue Point has decided that it just didn't make sense for them to move forward without that. After months of hanging in limbo, the decision was final. CKX would close the next day. I was hoping it was a hoax, and as it turns out, unfortunately, it's not. Uh, we were all very excited for not only uh, the city and all of western, southwestern Manitoba, but especially for your, you folks, the employees. And to have it go uh, the way it has is very disappointing. CKX has covered the West Mound region, from making friends at City Hall to being a window to the outside world. CKX has been uh, the media of record that's available in every household throughout Western Manitoba for the last half century. Uh, it diminishes the stature of the city, it, dimin it diminishes the stature of the region, uh, and that's never a good thing. It's a, uh, so it's a very dark day for, for Brandon and, and, and Western Manitoba. And while 39 jobs are lost, so are future opportunities. There is so much more that comes with the station. I mean, yes, the jobs are really important to the local economy, but we're looking at the linkages now between uh, spousal employment that are, are linked with those. We're also looking at the great relationship that's been had with the Cinnaboyne Community College. As the source for hands-on, accessible, local coverage comes to an end. We're the second largest city in the province. To lose our only television station, uh, it's, I think, a sign of what's to come in this market. And I think for those students, they're going to look at other options now uh, and possibly not come to Brandon to go to school or or if they do go they're not going to have practicum or maybe job opportunities. You know it's been a selling selling feature for us uh, all the the coverage we get here for uh, our program so uh, it, it's hard to imagine really uh, what it's going to be like uh, without them. CKX in all its transformations over the years is signing off. Now what are we supposed to do for a local news network on television? There's nothing for us to watch 
for that, you know, the closest thing would be Winnipeg, which isn't Brandon. It's it's Winnipeg, so it does nothing to benefit the local the locals and surrounding area of Westman. After more than 50 years and thousands of your stories, we have holes in the ceiling and tape holding together our microphones. But as the doors close at CKX, this is our station and yours. In Brandon, Tanya Kohut, CKX News. As I say, the show must go on at least until 7 o'clock. Let's take our first look at weather. Sitting at 7 degrees right now, wind to the northeast at 26. The relative humidity is 73%. We're not the only ones who had to say goodbye today. The family and friends of 30 soldiers from the Royal Canadian Horse Artillery sent off loved ones to Afghanistan for a six-month tour. And as CKX's Candace Bowles shows us, it wasn't an easy departure. <laughs> It was a room full of emotions, with some knowing what to expect and others not so sure, but looking forward to the adventure. Probably the experience, just seeing what it's like over there, the, the different culture and, and uh, yeah, just, just the experience of it all, because I'm not really sure what to expect. Brent joined the military three and a half years ago. He wanted a stable job in order to provide for his family, but nothing could have prepared them for today. Up until probably this morning, I just went about my regular routines, doing the kids' things, and just kind of try to put it out of my head or just pretend it was uh, like going on courses and things like that. So today's going to be a rough day when he gets on that bus. You want to try it on? Hey, bud. Happy. Here. Here you go. Especially hey. rough for Nolan, who is four, and six-year-old Olivia, but they tried their best to make the goodbye easier for them. We just kind of just sat her down and told her, you know, I'm going away, and I think the, um, the three months in Suffield, you know, that helped her too, because Dad wasn't there for three months, so, and with this tour, I should be back around Christmas time. But until then, they have rituals they will do so they don't forget about their daddy. We're going to uh, send a letter each week in the mail from dad to Olivia. So she's getting the peace of mind of hearing from him at least that way because calls are probably going to be far and few between. And for this stay at home mom, she says she's going to take everything away from the experience that she can. It's one more thing that's just going to make me tougher. So help me get through it so and I am proud of him he's doing a remarkable thing this is the seventh group of Manitoba based personnel to head out to Afghanistan and in a couple weeks 250 more will be joining them in Shiloh Candace Bowl CKX News it's an answer in the case, but it won't bring police closer to solving the disappearance of Amber McFarland. A lie detector test has taken one of the RCMP's top suspects off the list of those involved with the disappearance of Amber McFarland. Graham Saxton was one of the two men arrested in connection with her disappearance in July. At that time, CKX learned that 40-year-old Saxton and McFarland's 39-year-old ex-boyfriend were arrested. They were released without charges just days later. Our CMP will not confirm Saxton's claims that he is no longer a suspect, but Saxton says he was given that information earlier this week. He picked them up thinking they were legitimate customers, but two men had more than just a ride in mind this morning in Portage. They were wielding a knife and demanded money from their taxi driver. The incident happened in the northeast part of the city. An undisclosed amount of cash was turned over and the suspects fled. The 62-year-old driver was uninjured. The suspects are described as being between 18 to 24 years of age with average build, wearing hooded sweaters. Police are still investigating the case. A knife, drugs, alcohol, some cash, and love letters from a female nurse. Those were among the items being secretly stashed away by a mentally ill patient at the Selkirk Mental Health Center. That discovery by staff has led to major security upgrades at the facility. The patient, 26-year-old Joey Weave, has been held there since he was found not criminally responsible in 2001 for the murder of his stepmother at their home in Niverville, Manitoba. The center is also holding Vince Lee, the man who beheaded Greyhound bus passenger Tim McLean